All right, welcome back everybody for another episode of Chasing Ghosts. This is the video series where I talk about those hard to find, those impossible to find, those really, really tough books that you have to really do some research and get lucky to find that you just don't see up at on the wall at your LCS on the you know the weekly basis. Uh, hopefully you're still enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel as we march towards 3K now. And make sure you come back on Wednesday for the live show uh, where we do our celebration for reaching 2,000 subscribers last week. We're going to be giving away a bunch of stuff, or I'm going to be giving away a bunch of stuff. And we might have a bunch of guests drop by as well just to uh, stop by and say hi. Uh, so make sure, you, if you can, try to make the live show tomorrow on Wednesday. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed yesterday's uh, pickup show. I went to uh, King Con 3 over the weekend, a uh, little comic show here in New Jersey. And I did uh, show off my pickups uh, yesterday. And, uh, you know, apart from uh, the books and the T-shirt that I was wearing there, I did get this T-shirt as well from my buddy Ben. So I uh, make sure you follow the mellow over on uh, whatnot as well, because, uh, you know, Ben's good people. So got my shirt on for today's show here. Now, this is also a special show in that I am doing a special Star Wars focused uh, Chasing Ghosts this week. Uh, I promised I would do one every so often, every couple of months, and here we go. We have another batch. I mean, I can't do it too often because we'll run out of Star Wars comics if we do that, but I do have a selection for you this week. So if you want to know what Star Wars books I want to talk about this week, just hang on for a few seconds after the break, and I will be right back. Okay, as I mentioned in the open, we are going to be doing a little special this week, focused in on Star Wars. So, all of the books in this week's selection are going to be Star Wars comics. Hopefully you're into that. Uh, you know I love Star Wars, and uh, if you do too, make sure you watch our Sunday show live. Every Sunday at 9.15 Eastern Time, uh, Tales from the Dark Side, where we go over all Every week's news, uh, releases, and everything coming out. I mean, we do have Andor coming uh, tomorrow now. Uh, this comes out on Tuesday. So uh, Andor dropping Wednesday this week. Three episodes. I can't wait to check those out. But before we get to that, let's look at some uh, pretty cool Star Wars comics. And we are going to start off with one of the... One of my favorite little uh, things to collect. A little, uh, little niche, a little niche uh, in the market that I like to... Uh, to take part in is uh, buying these negative space variants. So John Tyler Christopher has done a number of these, including a few Star Wars uh, negative space covers. I really still need that uh, annual number four, that one in 25, but I'm probably never going to afford it. But there are these other options out here as well, like this Emperor, uh, which is pretty cool with the purple. Uh, it's just a cool looking image. I kind of dig it. Now, like I said, this is a John Tyler Christopher cover, and this is a store exclusive. This is his store exclusive, so uh, I don't mind covering it really here because it's not like uh, you know just some random shop. This is the artist himself who has a store selling these uh, you know variants exclusive there. So it's not too bad. Uh, December twenty eighteen, uh, I believe these were limited to a thousand, so uh, we don't need to estimate the print run. That was what the stated amount was. Uh, so there, we're gonna have a thousand of these for sale, and uh, that, that pretty much lines up with what I can see out there uh, for the most part. We checked the CGC census. There are a, a, a number of copies in there. There's 196, so almost 200, which is about a 20% of the print run. That's not you know, not too shabby, I would say. Uh, there are five 9.9s out of these, so uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, 184 9.8s, and then there's only six 9.6s, and there's a single 9.4, so they are all pretty high grade, so uh, I got to imagine these are the best 1,000 out of the uh, the print run that got uh, released to the public. Now, what does this book uh, sell for? Now, 
This one, if you did see one sell over the last couple of months, has, has taken a little bit of a dip. Uh, best offer on 80 bucks back in August. And in July, there was 19 bids that got a raw one up to $52, which uh, ain't too bad because I believe this was a little bit more expensive uh, not that long ago. So the prices have come down on this uh, Emperor cover. Uh, and if you want to see what's out in the market, there are there are a few. There, there are plenty out there for you. So uh, I don't think we can call this one a ghost. Uh, but 120 bucks raw is uh, kind of what I was seeing. And then about 300 to uh, 370 in uh, CGC 9.8, which is uh, not a cheap amount. So you can see there the occasional cheap one has sold. But uh, for, by and large, this is still a $100 plus raw book. So, uh, you know. If you have one, good on you. If not, well, that's what you're looking at. There's a thousand of them out there. There's more than a thousand Star Wars fans, so you're gonna have to just pry one of these off of their out of their hands. And uh, if you really wanted to add it to your collection, but there are options. As I said, there's more than uh, what I showed you. This is just a small sampling. Now, uh, there are a bunch of others. Uh, well, a couple of recent ones too, with the uh, Anakin, uh, you know, the Hayden Christensen, the blue cover. Then you had the. Uh, the Luke, the orange cover, those came out not that long ago. Uh, we're not going to look at those, but we're going to look at one other that came around uh, back in this time frame, uh, one of these negative spaces for this week. We're going to look at the Yoda uh, green. I mean, this thing pops out at you as well. Uh, I like it. It looks, uh, you know, photorealistic Yoda there, bright green, negative space. I like the letters, how they're just carved out of uh, the regular image. And same deal. This is John Tyler Christopher from his, uh, you know, his web store, uh, they limited, this is May 2019, by the way, uh, also limited to a thousand copies. So, uh, let's see what we got on this one. Now for this one, uh, about the same in the census, 212, uh, with 191, nine, eight, 16, nine, sixes, and then a few others, no nine nines on this particular one, at least as of yet. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe somebody gets lucky, but, uh, 212 is again, a solid amount, about 20% of the print run, uh, graded. Uh, and with that, what's out on the market? There are still raws to be found out there as well, but uh, a lot of a lot of graded sales. So you can see, uh, was that a 9.8 uh, CBCS sold for 180 bucks back in July? Uh, there was also a best offer on 500 bucks uh, for a CGC one also back in uh, July, as well as 145 dollars raw sale, uh, which ain't uh, ain't too shabby. And there's a few more as well, but that's kind of like a broad strokes roundabout with most of them are kind of in that same range and kind of like the last book uh issue 58 this issue 66 i'm sorry if i didn't say the numbers the uh, emperor was 58 and uh the yoda is uh star wars 66 uh there are copies of this out there still again you got options if you're hunting or buy you weren't looking to buy there are options they're just a little pricey uh there's more than what i've shown here and uh, what i've shown here are mostly graded copies because that's uh like I said, by and large, this is a good number of them graded. And 9.8s are looking 350 to 375 in uh, CGC 9.8. And then there's a CBCS uh, SS signature series uh, looking for 450. So a little bit of a premium there for the signature. But, uh, oh, and there's apparently a sketch in there. Oh, I see the little, there's a little Vader head down there sketched on there as well. So nice little remark. Yeah, not too bad. But 450 on that one if you were uh, yeah, shopping. So I don't think, I think without, with you know, burying the, uh, Bearing the end result once we get to the end, I'm pretty sure we already can tell these two are not going to be uh, get the ghost term for this week. But they're still not that easy to find. These aren't books you see all the time. Uh, I haven't come across these, uh, uh, um, you know, in my travels recently. Uh, so I'm looking, but I don't really want to pay these high prices. I'm going to hold out so I can find something more, uh, more palatable for myself, uh, at least on my wallet. So with that, we're going to go check out uh, some variants on another run. We're going to go check out the Thrawn variants. We've already covered this one, so I'm showing you this cover, so you know I know it. I'm I'm aware of it. You know I know the Matina it was one in fifty, but we already did this. We already covered this one, so we can't do it. We're not doing it again. We're not going to go into repeats just yet. We have plenty of other books we can talk about, so uh, we're not going to cover Thrawn one, the uh, Matina cover, but we're going to look at all of the rest of the one in twenty fives that hit for the rest of the run. So let's just jump right into issue two with uh, this little cover here. I mean, it's all right. It's not the greatest art-wise, uh, you know, like it's not those one of those covers that just make me go, wow, this is a, an impressive image. It kind of almost just looks like an interior panel a bit. This is Declan Shavley. Like I said, it's not that the art is bad. It's just, you know, it's just not a great, like, grabbing cover. Uh, but a 1 in 25 from March of 2018. I actually do have one of these. Uh, I picked this up for cheap way, way back. Uh, I think I got two and four. I think the only ones I might have. I don't know. I have to dig in my boxes to see, but I'm pretty sure I got this one along with the other one. 
Uh, estimated print run on this series is pretty consistent, uh, at least as, as far as two through six go. And uh, this one is about 37,000. So I know, remember, these are estimated numbers based on the information that's available to us. Getting the estimated print runs from Comicron with the ratio incentive, doing that basic math of you know dividing it by 25, that's where these estimates are coming from. These are not set in stone. Don't take these as gospel. These are just estimated numbers of what are potentially out there for these books. Just want to make that clear and say that right now so I don't have to say it again uh, or the rest of the show. But potentially, there are about 1,500 copies of the incentive based on that ratio math with the 37,000 uh, know, regular estimated print run. Now, with that, there are only 28 in the CGC census with 21 nine eights and then three nine sixes and a couple of others. But not a lot in the census for this book. Also, not a lot of sales, uh, with only two that I could find within the last couple of months. And one was a 9.6 for 180 bucks. The other was a 9.8 for a healthy $500. So I might have to look into getting mine graded uh, if I can dig them out and see if they're in uh, you know, good enough shape. I got to check them. I don't know off, offhand how, uh, how nice they look, but I don't think there was anything wrong with them. So I'm going to have to dig these out because these books are kind of pricey. With that, if you wanted to buy one, we got, we got a couple options. There are actually three. Uh, two raws, and the raws are asking 200 and 220 uh, for this book raw, and then there's a 98 also looking for $700. So, like I said, healthy prices on these. Well, everybody's expecting to see Thrawn uh, show up in Ahsoka, if not sooner. So uh, we'll see what happens. I know we'll get him too, but and I'm looking forward to it. But uh, th these prices are uh, they're, they're pretty high. I mean, they're they're. They're significant. They're, they're significant asks uh, on these books. And like you saw, you saw the, the sales. So these aren't ridiculous, crazy asks because the prices are being paid are right around this. So uh, this is a pricey book, as well as the next one, which is issue three in this series with this gorgeous uh, Raza cover. This is also all these are going to be one in 25s. This was April of 2018 on this one. Uh, it's Governor Price. I believe this is our first appearance. The cover of this is actually very similar to the regular, but this is the Raza. Uh, and you'll, you'll notice the difference if you see them side by side, but uh, kind of the same setup with Thrawn and her on the, uh, the cover of the regular as well. Print run dips a little bit. It's down to about 34,000 thereabouts. So the incentive is only about 1,300, just under 1,400 uh, potentially for this one. The census also doesn't have a whole heck of a lot with only 34 in the CGC census right now with uh, 798s, 1196s, and 994s, and then a few others. So this one looks to get uh, graded pretty harshly as uh, the bulk of them are not 98s like uh, we've seen with many of these uh, types of books. The bulk of them is actually 96s and 94s. So close, but no cigars. Uh, recent sales on this book also show this is also a pretty pricey book with a 92 selling for 140 bucks and then a raw selling for 200 dollars uh just back in uh, july so caught one in the last couple of months not a lot of sales but once again the price is uh pretty steep it is pretty steep which is why the asking prices are also where they are on this book and the asks on this are about 250 bucks raw $300 for a 9.6 or a healthy $1,200 for a CGC 9.8. So uh, keep that in mind if you're shopping. There are three options out there for you, and uh, none of them are cheap. None of them are cheap. Uh, I mean, realistically, the $300 for a 9.6 doesn't seem too bad with the raw is $250. But still, all the prices are, uh, are pretty significant. And like I said, I do not have this one, uh, I don't believe. But I do have the next one somewhere in a box. This is number four of uh, Thrawn. And this is a uh, Casper Winchgard, if I'm saying that right. I uh, probably butchered that. But a 1 in 25 from May of 2018. Print run, again, slightly dips to about 33,000. So the incentive is still in that 1,300 range, but on the lower end, as opposed to the last one was on the higher end. Uh, so this is only a 1,330. The last one was like 1,370-something. Uh, but in the census, also, still... Not a lot of copies, uh, only 31 again, uh, but this one is mostly 9.8s. It's 17 9.8s, 7 9.6s, 5 9.4s, and then a couple others uh, rounded it out. But uh, I don't know. I guess they grade the Raza harder than this uh, reddish magenta kind of like color. Like the cover, the actual cover in person, like it's it's pretty vibrant, like the color of it. It uh, kind of pops at you, but uh, I guess it's easier to get that high grade on it for one reason or another. Copies of sold of this book uh, also pretty 
you know, pretty much in that kind of same range. Uh, best offer on 200 bucks for a 9.6, uh, and then another 9.6 sold for 225. So if anything, it's a little cheaper than the last two, but uh, not too much, not by much. Uh, then we're going to move on to what's available if you want to go shopping, and you can see it's still kind of in that range 200 bucks for 9.6, and it's yours. Uh, with 11 watchers so there's other people watching it so uh, keep that in mind and uh, but if you want that 98 you're gonna have to go up to that 600 dollars range uh that one's actually ending tonight or it already ended tonight and i missed it but uh keep an eye on that so that, there's an example uh i'm filming this on sunday so if i would have done this video tomorrow or gotten the deck ready tomorrow that sale would have been gone maybe we'd have only had one up and then i would have had to call this one a ghost but as of now there are two available so as you know how we run things again i'm not trying to screw things up at the end but this one's not going to make the cut for the ghost because there are more than one available at the moment of when i did my checks again it's a moment in time people uh can't keep it uh can't keep it that fluid so it's, again this is just for fun informational purposes give you some interesting books to look for that aren't that easy to find that's all don't want anybody spending any of these prices to get in fomo for any of this stuff uh this is just like i said just kind of fun to run through this stuff i like looking into these things i like trying to find them if i can for cheap for cheap that's it moving on we're gonna stick with thrawn with number five we're almost through it Issue five. This is a uh, Raphael Albuquerque cover. It kind of harkens back to his uh, uh, like first appearance a little bit with the face in the background and the ship and all that stuff. Kind of looks like Air of the Empire. I mean, there's no Luke on the cover, obviously, but it, it gives me that a little bit of that uh, that kind of feel. Uh, one in twenty five from June of twenty eighteen on this one. Print run again dips just a tiny bit to about thirty, just under thirty two thousand. So the incentive is under thirteen hundred this time at about twelve seventy three. So uh, keep that in mind. None of these have gotten really, really low numbers. There's a decent amount potentially available for all of these books, but there are a lot of fans of Thrawn. So you can see here why the prices are where they are. 32 in the CGC census, which again is in that same kind of ballpark as the others. Uh, 29.8s, 596s, and then in a bunch of others. Uh, sales on this one, the last couple of months, there were three. Uh, looks like a 9.6 got a best offer on 500 bucks. We got a 9.8 that sold for $750. And then a raw one sold back in August for uh, about 190 So once again, same kind of range, that $200 kind of like 150 to 250 kind of raw range. And then the graded copies, you know, could be very expensive if you're going up for 9.8s. Uh, but if you want to go shopping for this one, I could only find one at this time for this one. Uh, there was a raw looking for $190 thereabouts i mean from canada so once you pay for shipping you're going to be north of that 200 dollars mark but uh still that's kind of like the range that's the range we're talking about for all of these uh for the most part including our last one so we're going to roll on to number six here and this one also got is it's gotten popular because not only is it the last issue of the series it's the last issue incentive of this series but it's also a first appearance in here uh our Ar arlani if i'm saying her name right um throughout the female uh I can't think of the, the race name. It's not, I want to say Chitari. That's, that's from Marvel. It's not, not Chitari, but you, you know, what I'm talking about, uh, Arlani. She's like the, she was actually superior to Thrawn, but anyway, connections to Thrawn. Maybe we see her at some point, maybe who knows, but, uh, the regular issue of this is also a good book to keep an eye out for, but the incentive has been hot for a little while. Uh, Luke Ross cover one to 25 July, 2018. I know this thing had hit highs of like 400 plus in that raw range. Uh, over the last year or two, but I don't think it's there anymore. Print run dips a tiny bit, so it's you know about thirty-one thousand. Uh, so the incentive is pretty close to the last one, about twelve thirty-nine. So very very close on issues five and six. Uh, about the same in the census, thirty-one, but with only eighteen nine eights, four nine sixes, six nine fours, and a couple of others. Uh, but plenty of sales on this one. This one moves, as I said, first appearance. A lot of talk about this one. 500 bucks for a 9.8. Looks like a best offer on 185 for raw. It seems like a not too bad of a price. Uh, 250 on a 9.6. And then 111.11 on eight bids back in July for another raw. So price definitely dipped. Like I said, I remember seeing copies of this sold for like $350, $400 way back. Uh, this one got really pricey there for a stretch. Uh, asking prices, uh, there are a few. Surprisingly, this one out there. Somebody's asking 500 bucks for a raw. 
Another asking 480 for a 9.4, and then a 98 is asking a healthy $1,300. And then there's a couple more than this, but these are three that kind of give you that baseline uh, valuation of what the asking prices are. If you want to go shopping for this one, it is still pretty pricey. So don't let that auction for 111 fool you. You're not going to probably find one for that price easily because uh, right now, Raw is asking 500 bucks. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind if you decide to go hunting and shopping for this one. That uh, the asking prices could still be pretty uh, significant right now, but who knows? Maybe you get lucky. Uh, all right, gonna hop over to do another series real quick because I figure that's the easiest way to go through the rest of the Star Wars book because we've done a lot of Star Wars. This is probably like the fourth or fifth one of these uh, chasing ghosts I've done focused solely on Star Wars books. So we've covered a lot of the big heavy hitters already, a lot of the hard to find variants, exclusives, and things like that. So I've got a few more. Don't worry. I got still got more in my pocket, but we're, we're, we're we'll run through them uh, eventually. So uh, for now, let's hit up the Last Jedi. Everybody's favorite movie, right? From the sequel trilogy. I know there's a lot. There's a lot of a uh, there's a lot of a uh, hatred for this movie. One reason. I don't think it's that bad. I don't know if it's my favorite of the sequel trilogy or not, but it's probably right up there with Force Awakens. I guess uh, I did not care for the Rise of Skywalker, but yeah. You check out the Sunday show for more on all of that. But uh, here we go. We're going to hit the Force Awakens, not Force Awakens, the Last Jedi adaptation books. Uh, and they're all 1 in 25, except for this book. For whatever reason, there was no 1 in 25 on issue 1. Issue 1 actually came out the same month as issue 2. And uh, it only had uh, 1 in 10 for whatever reason for issue 1. And that's this uh, photo cover with Kylo Ren. So I don't know why they didn't go with a, a higher ratio incentive on the first issue. That seemed like an odd choice, especially when they double shipped that month. Because issue two came out uh, in that uh, May of uh, 2018. This is a Michael Walsh cover, 1 in 25. Uh, yeah, very bright red, like kind of pops out at you. Uh, not a lot of other incentives. It's basically just the book. I think there might be an action figure or two covering. I don't remember, but not a lot of variants for this run. I mean, The Last Jedi uh, didn't... Uh, didn't sell very well as far as comic books go. And uh, it's probably part of the reason why we never got, uh, you know, any more. Like, I don't, I don't believe they ever did the adaptation for uh, The Rise of Skywalker. So there isn't even a comic adaptation for that. So uh, here we go. Estimated print run on that uh, second issue was about 22,000. Thereabouts, the incentive is only about, you know, just under 900, let's say. In the census, there are also not many, only four with uh, three nine eights and a single nine six for this book, which has also not had any recent sales the last couple of months. Uh, once again, it's just one of those things. It's not that I don't think these books aren't out there. I just don't think there's a lot of fans of The Last Jedi, and uh, it's just one of the things that's just not selling. Um, but if you want to see what's available for sale, well, you're also going to have to keep looking because I couldn't find any available either. So uh, Last Jedi could be tough to find these incentives. Just saying, just saying. So let's check out. That was issue two. So let's check out issue three. Uh, once again, here, here's the cover. It's a BBB-8 focused thing. It looks like they're on Canto Bite, which is not my favorite excursion from that film. But uh, here we are. That's where we're at. And uh, the BB-8 cover is a Casper uh, Wingard again. If you kind of, if I'm saying it right, I'm probably messing it all up. But this is June of 2018. Also a one in 25. Print runs dipped down to under 20,000 now, so the incentive is about 773 copies, maybe. And uh, in the census, there are still very, very little. Only three, with 198 and 296s on this book, which has also had no recent sales. Uh, so, whew, no, no, again, one of those things. Just nobody looking for these. Nobody buying these. But if you are looking uh, for this one, you can find one. There is one. And only wants 17 bucks. Uh, well, twenty dollars shipping from the UK if you're not uh, in the UK. So if you're you want to try to buy this stateside, this is you know like close to forty bucks all said and done. But still, for one in twenty five, that's uh, not that easy to find. It's not a terrible asking price, right? Now we're gonna go to the next book, which actually I remember this book getting hot for one reason or another. Everybody wanted this Hodo uh, Hodo or book, not Hodo Ho Hondo. No, I always mess her name. Hodo Hodo. Is it Hodo? Hodor. Hodor is Game of Thrones. Hondo is Hondo. Uh, and also John Wayne. And uh, what's the one that was on Good Morning America or whatever? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Hodo. I think it's Hodo. But the Hodo cover. 
for issue four is also a one in 25. And this is a Rod Rice, Rod Reese uh, cover from July of 2018. I remember this got hot. Like I said, this was hot when it came out. I remember it was hard to find. It was like selling for double ratio, like right out of the gate, kind of like today. I mean, that's now become the norm for a lot of these things. But uh, back at this time, like it seemed like a novel uh, occurrence. Like, wow, uh, it's already selling for way over ratio. Now, these days, a couple of years later, that's like the norm. It's like, why isn't this book selling for uh, over ratio when it first comes out? I guess it's not worth buying and then people forget about it. I don't know. Weird market. Just a weird market. We're just so far ahead of everything that uh, the life cycle on a lot of these books is uh, accelerated and short. But uh, eh, whatever. Uh, estimated print run on this dips a little, little bit again, down to about 18,000. So the incentive is down to about 722 copies, maybe, for this one. So not too bad. I mean, I kind of like the cover. I like the, the pink hair, and then I like all the ships behind her, the bombers, and then, you know, what she does with the, you know, with against that uh, uh, Imperial, well, not Imperial, First Order, I guess, uh, ship. Uh, in the census, there's more in the census on this particular book, because like I said, this one... This one spiked. The other ones didn't. Nobody was talking about the other ones. This one, however, spiked for a little bit. Uh, so there's 15 in the census with 10 nine eights and then a few others. Uh, but this one has come come down from those uh, even those lofty double ratio sales. Is the last couple sales have only been for 17 bucks and 15 bucks. So under ratio, which I'm surprised. I would pay under ratio. I didn't realize this was under ratio. I pay under ratio for this. 15 probably would as where I would top top out. But you know. Eh. I'd consider it. Uh, that said, I don't think I have that option right now. As, uh, there are two copies available, and they are not that cheap. But there are two raw copies up, one for about 35 and one for about 72 right now. So, yeah, over ratio for both. Um, the one significantly so, but that's what we got. So there are two out there if you're looking for issue four. But for The Last Jedi, we got two more uh, before that series ends. So we have issue five here. Uh, pretty fun with uh, Kylo Ren uh, choking out Hux. Uh, not too bad, right? Uh, David Lopez cover. Uh, I mean, it does have the crazy eyes. August 2018, again, 1 in 25, as all of these have been. Uh, print run again, dips down to about 16,000. So our incentive might dip to about 669, potentially. Uh, again, estimates, ballpark numbers. Uh, only eight in the census for this one, which is uh, interesting considering uh, the issues two and three had like three and four. So still a couple more, seven, nine, eights, and only one, nine, six uh, for the ones that are there. But no copies have sold recently, like uh, no sales. Uh, again, not too surprising as that's been the case for a couple of these. And uh, kind of like issue two, though, there are none available. So this one could be tough to find. Uh, you know, it's... The penultimate issue of the mini series, the six issue series. So it's issue number five. Yeah, yeah it could be tough. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe just nobody wants it. But we do we run the numbers? It could be tough, is all I'm saying. And then we have our last issue. We'll do the final issue in the series. Kind of like this cover. Uh, I feel like somebody it might have been Ben, even who posted Mellow Fellow. He might have posted it on his IG. Uh, I'll have to double check that after I'm done filming this. But uh, issue six, this is a Mike Mayhew cover. Uh, and I, I do enjoy Mayhew's art. Uh, 1 in 25, September 2018. This was, uh, again, dipped down to about 16,000, and the incentive is a lucky 666 copies, estimated. And in the census for this particular one, there are only six, 398s and 396s. So uh, neat little pairs of threes. But uh, much like issue five, I couldn't find any copies that had sold recently, nor could I find any copies actually listed because I wanted, I, like I said, I was interested. I might buy this if I can find it for cheap enough. I kind of like it. I don't know. Something about it. Maybe it's just all the red the speed lines. It's, it's kind of cool. But uh, that said, that is our last of The Last Jedi. But I do have one more book to talk about. And that one more book is kind of near and dear to my heart because I am half Italian and half Filipino. So I am kind of interested in this Filipino edition of Star Wars 1. Uh, now, I don't know if you know this as a, or if you know much about foreign books. I don't know that much about foreign books. I only know a tiny, tiny little bit where uh, some of my friends have shared some uh, interesting info. Uh, so 
the Filipino edition of books are really, really tough. Like some of the toughest uh, foreign editions are the ones from the Philippines, like the uh, ASM 300, I think is the, the big boy, the tough one there. Uh, and then a couple others are not very easy to get these uh, Filipino editions of these comics. Uh, I do have one uh, Filipino uh, comic, and it is a uh, Bloodstone uh, number one, the original, the Ulysses S. Bloodstone, the Marvel premiere, I think it is number one. That one, I do have it somewhere. Found it for a buck. I thought it was pretty cool. Didn't know what it was at the time. And then, as I said, talked to a couple of foreign guys. They explained to me what uh, what it was. And if Matt Roybal might have uh, helped me out with that one. But apparently, the Philippines edition of Star Wars 1 is really tough. Now, when this actually came out, I'm not sure. I get a con conflicting information when I go searching for the uh, time frame online of when this might have been released. It could have been the same year in 77. It could have been in the 80s. This is a reprint of Star Wars 1, and it is missing like some of the little text boxes here that you can see here, so that might be an easier way to pick it up. But this is the uh, Alamar Bookstore uh, version from the Philippines. It's kind of what they noted as, because I think that's where this uh, edition was... Uh, printed or released so uh keep that in mind but we have no idea what the print run is so we're just going to get that out of the way no clue what the print run could have been on this thing but we do have a couple in the census there are a couple and you can see here it, it breaks this all down with alamar booksmark exclusive movie adaptation right you know the whole thing philippine filipino edition uh now cgc had it listed for 1977 but again i don't know if that's the right time or not for certain because the other places i saw said this was released i think i'm close to like 1980 so i don't know but what i can tell you is there are four of this issue in the census and of those four the highest highest graded copy is a five yeah a five these books are not easy to find in high grade uh i mean the climate in the philippines is pretty damp and it is pretty damn hot uh so Books aren't long for this world if they're over there for too long, I don't think. But a 5.0 is the highest, and then there looks like there's a three and a half, and then a two and a half, and a two. So there's only four in the CGC census for this particular edition. So uh, you're probably not going to be shocked when I tell you the next bit that, yes, I couldn't find any recent sales of this book, nor could I find any copies available for purchase at this time. So this is really going to be one of those tough books. If you are a foreign collector and you're really into that kind of thing, or, I mean, just collector in general, these, it's good to know this information, that this is a tough book to find. So if you somehow stumble into one at some um, used bookstore or some comic shop in the middle of nowhere, and like, I don't know, I got this, this Filipino uh, Star Wars book or this foreign Star Wars book, or it looks like it's just a Whitman reprint variant, but it's not. Like, you got to open it up to uh, kind of check out uh, where it's from. Uh, and that's how you tell the difference. So I don't have other Im images to share, but there's not a lot of info for me to share on this book. But I know for the other uh, editions for the Philippines, you got to look like in the inside uh, inside cover and like the back cover, and you'll see like uh, it it's not the same. It's like from like a bookstore or it's like a reading club, things like that. This would be from a bookstore. I got to imagine it's probably have some sort of checklist or something uh, on it, like some other uh, Filipino editions I've seen before. But uh, that's how you would tell the difference. So if it's just bagged and boarded in a, in a box, like it might just look like this. It just looks like a normal maybe reprint. You think it's, oh, it's just another Whitman reprint. Uh, no big deal. But it could be a big deal. Who knows? That all said, hopefully you found that little list interesting. That's the little selection of Star Wars I have for you this time. I got another set of Star Wars. I can do another one of these soon. Maybe, and again, I'll wait a couple of months, kind of stretch it out before we uh, hit the world of Star Wars for our potential ghosts again. But for now... Again, moment in time, me checking this weekend. These ones, I got to say, are hard to find. There are multiple copies of those JTC negative spaces, and some of those throngs had a couple of copies or a few copies up. Uh, and again, all in timing, all in timing, because had I waited a day from that number four, there might only have been one copy, and we could put it on the next list, uh, which are our ghosts. So with these, I can only find one or none uh, available. So... With that said, most of these had none. I think the Thrawn 5 and the uh, Last Jedi 3 both had one copy up. All the others, the other Last Jedi variants, as well as that Filipino edition of Star Wars 1, there are none out there that I could find. So these ones, I feel comfortable calling these ones ghosts this week. So uh, that's what we're going to go with. Uh, again, this is just, it, this is nothing set in stone. This is this is a moment in time look. Again, what the market is right now, this is what we see. All in all, these are all pretty tough books to find. So uh 
don't take this too seriously. This is just kind of for informational purposes uh, and just kind of for fun. So remember, a lot of these numbers are estimated. It's just what's out there. And it's just books that interest me. I don't want you to get FOMO. I don't want you to feel like you got to buy any of this stuff. But uh, if you do, let me know if you do. Tag me on Instagram. Share it with me because I love seeing when people have these tough to find books. So thanks for stopping by and checking this out. I appreciate all the support. Make sure you come back tomorrow, Wednesday, for the uh, tax show for the live giveaway as we celebrate hitting 2,000 subscribers. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing because I want to see if we can get to 3K quicker than it took us to get uh, from 1 to 2K. So that said, uh, thank you again, and I will be back with some more content very soon. All right, later.